They are closed by the hand of the of providence, exactly in conformity with their wants and the nature of things. They dress accommodates itself. To, their dress. Their dress accommodates itself to the heat of summer and the cold of winter. It falls and becomes thin in the former period. You're starting to muddy your words together. Enunciate. In the former period and grows thicker during the winter. The aquatic birds have a species of very warm down, which only covers what part of their breast exposed to the water. It is varnished with a bland oil and is at once fortified against cold and humidity. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yep. That's amazing. Nature, nature <laughs> carries her foresight still for further. The same animal acquires... Why did you just pronounce nature like that? Because the rule is letter U, when it's followed, goes D or T, has its proper long sound as in pure or mute. Very good. <laughs> Got allergies or what? Yeah. Did you take the allergy tincture? Oh. Well, you should. <laughs> uh, the same animal acquires a different okay, fur. Okay, let's look at these words. Read them to me. Conductors. Bland. Aquatic. Humidity. Naturalist. Conformation. Torrid zone. Equilibrium, maze, boundlessness. So you're going to write all these words in cursive. Torrid zone, I would like you to look up like in the encyclopedia or something and focus on maybe making a picture or a map of all the different zones. And then, so what I would do is like make a map, do the zones, and then maybe like draw a little picture of what that zone includes. So if it's a desert, draw a little desert. If it's cold, draw snow or whatever. Oh, you're so sleepy. Are you seeing me through that zone? Okay, and then, so you're gonna do these in cursive. Hold on. So we read through this. We appreciated the language. There was a certain part I wanted to, yeah, read that sentence to us. Their flower buds are destined to multiply and perpetuate the species. So we talked about how they could have said, flowered seeds make more plants. Yeah. <laughs> but the beautiful language that's used throughout this story, and we talked about how our use of adjectives and our use of verbs can really express exactly what we're trying to say and to get more creative in our writing and using more descriptive words, right? Mm -hmm. So this whole thing was just absolutely... That's the one thing I love about these McGuffies is the language is just gorgeous. So we always want to read a little bit above our reading level, right? So this is a little bit above your reading level. So you had to stumble over some words you didn't know and go back and reread sentences so that they flowed properly, correct? Then we answered these questions, and often the questions cause them to go back in the text and find the answer, right? Mm -hmm. And then we read through these errors, so misspellings or mispronunciations that typically happen with these words. And so now her assignment, uh, go get me your McGuffey book so I can kind of give them an idea. So now her assignment is these words, and typically I will have her look up the definitions of all of them. But for this, um, this one's a lot of science information. So what I'm actually going to have her do is look up torrid zone and kind of understand the zones and of um, weather and temperature so that she can, and then maybe look up a couple of those words. Go ahead and open up. So this is what we use, but you can just use a McGuffey notebook. So once we finish this book, we'll move to a McGuffey notebook. I need to see your past lessons here. So this one was a lot about um, science.
clothing of animals and vegetables talked about how they shed their skin, how they acclimate to clients. Our last one was about Jesus Christ and his character. Did you stain my book or was it already like that? The one before that was about a silly little story about a mouse that got so excited it died. <laughs> it expired. <laughs> And then the one before that was a long couple passages all about the Bible. This was a very, very long, more about the Bible and the Bible. So it kind of is uh, fluttering in between different subjects and topics. So the next one we read about is The Lost Child, which looks like a story that'll teach us something. It's got some sort of moral ending, and they're all so evangelistic. Here we have the rainbow, so we'll learn about the rainbow. And then here is a poem. Now with poems, what we're going to do is actually memorize them. All of that? So the entire really poem, we might spend a couple weeks oh. on it or something, but yes, we will memorize these poems and appreciate poetry, which is going to be really good. So we'll probably spend a few weeks on this poem, really diving into its meaning, memorizing the stanzas, and um, appreciating some poetry. So you get all of that in one McGuffey. And this is the third reader, and you are how old? 11, yes. turning 12. Yeah. So I think that's sixth going into seventh grade, technically. Yeah, technically mm -hmm. it's supposed to be, but, but I'm like in second, seventh You're grade. like in seventh or eighth grade level. Well, that's what I'm putting you in. Yeah. Um, okay, so show us what we do. So now I'm assigning her words. So can I get that? So what I have them do is typically they look up the definition of words. So here's transforming. Here she wrote it in cursive and in manuscript, cursive and manuscript, cursive and manuscript. Um, and then she'll look up the definitions. So transforming means changing the form right, right, right. So there's her definitions. And then I'll have her use them in sentences so that it shows me she understands their meaning. My mom is fabulously amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So then the next day is copy work. So she'll take a paragraph from the um, text and she will write it out, just copy it. So this gives her, so although many hundreds of thousands of books have been written, in different ages, your spacing here is poor. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, I would actually have her redo quite a bit of this writing because it's a little bit sloppy. By wise and learned men, even the best of them will bear no comparison with the Bible in respect either of religion, morality, history, or purity and sublimity of composition. So she really focuses on this, the spelling, the punctuation, the grammar, Right. Sometimes they may have her identify, like highlight certain words and have her identify which parts of speech those are. Um, and then she can draw a picture. Nancy, I found Homer. I like thrill kiss. Thriller. Nah. Oh, <laughs> is that what that says? <laughs> nah, I found a Bible. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, and then she does it dictation. So we cover it up. She studies the, the passage and she does it from memory. I will read it. But then all the spelling, punctuation, and everything she does from memory. And then typically one's in manuscript, one's in cursive. And then she can draw some other word pictures if she wants. What is this purity picture about? That's a uh, What? What? That's a lily. Oh, it's a lily. A white lily? Yes. Pretty. So, yeah, so that's how we use it. So that gets us some grammar, some all sorts of different things you can do. Science. You can get really creative based on what the lesson is about. Um, and then I have two girls. They're twins in this level. So uh, they are on the same story at the same time. But I scatter their days. So I read with Alicia today, for instance. And then I... Well, I know. We're a little bit behind. But I would read with Alicia today. And then I would read with Ahava Tuesday. Um, and then they're kind of scattered. So one is on a little bit, a day behind the other one. 
so it works out well. So that's how we use the third McGuffey reader. The goal with these McGuffeys, especially at this older age, is to go slow. Do not try to get through the book. The goal is to really focus on the content. So every day before she does her words, she'll reread the passage. And then she'll go on to her words, which are here. And then the next day she'll reread the passage again. And then we'll pick a paragraph for her to focus on. And then she'll reread the passage again. And then uh, we'll study this passage some more. So, so that is how we use the McGuffey's. And at this, geez, girl, go get a little bit of coffee. Mm, I'm tired. So that is how we'll use it. And we'll really take it slow and go through it. And you have more than enough content to get through high school because there's a fourth book <laughs> that's like big. And it's like even it's like, above my reading level. Like, well, maybe not. I like to read. But yeah, so that's how you use it for a seventh grader. <laughs> or whatever grade you're in. <laughs> Thank you.